Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Several things going on, and of course, right back to North Korea again, and also the question about whether or not President Trump is actually in control of the military itself. Now, I know that's a pretty far-fetched to say that because we all want to think that when you vote for a president or for a man to be president or a woman to be president, whatever the case may be, that that leader is the commander in chief of the U.S. armed forces. But more and more, that seems to be slipping from reality as we know it. Now, many of you already are aware of what is called a shadow government or some other type of government. There are those that may even be familiar with Sarah McClendon, the former journalist or the journalist that actually uh, knew Bill Clinton, that he states to her that uh, there is a government within the government, and he says, I have no control over that. Uh, well, there's a lot more presidents that have weighed in on it and spoke about a shadow government, and this whole issue with North Korea, Russia, China, and whether or not is Russia and China actually there in a pact to protect North Korea? Is that a possibility? What about the bomb, the Moab bomb that was dropped in Afghanistan? Later we find out that no, President Donald Trump did not authorize it, and a general just does the mother of all bombs on his own without any authorization from the president? Well, Again, who's running the government? And this whole idea of a war with Russia is becoming more and more real on a daily basis. First, let's real quick uh, take a look at RIA.RU at a uh, news post that they had just put out showing that North Korea, while they were celebrating their own celebrations there inside of the uh, inside of their country here on their anniversary the other day, they were actually playing a video in the background that for most Americans, no doubt, would be very disturbing. Yeah, you're seeing a submarine moving forth. They jump back over to their uh, their choir singing there, their military choir doing the singing. And all the while, though, you're going to see submarine uh, land intercontinental ballistic missiles being fired off. And, of course, it's their way of a show of force. And the target, though, is none other than the United States in the video there. You get to that as the video continues on. And, of course, the last thing you see after the bombs begin to go off in this video is that the American flag is what is seen uh, perpetrated there on the screen there to show the world that North Korea no doubt is intending uh, to launch a strike on the United States. Now the United States may consider that a provocative action and then later decide that they should take action as a result. I can't say yay or nay, have no idea what the U.S. will do regarding that. But we also have this incredible article here that was also done by Russian language Vesti uh, UKR.com in the Russian language that speaks about the Carl Vinson. Now I bring this, this issue up about the Carl Vinson because of those of you that watch Fox News happen to know that the Carl, uh, Fox News stated that the USS Carl Vinson carrier was not on the way to North Korea according to the reports that they were getting. That the generals pretty much said we have a date over there in uh, Australia for war exercises and we're going to keep that date with them. Made President Trump look like pretty much Again, a man that's not running the country, correct? Well, maybe not so fast. Maybe they were steaming towards North Korea, and at least according to this uh, Russian news report here, it does say the U.S. Air, uh, aircraft carrier Carl Vinson and its accompanying strike group, which was, according to Donald Trump, had to swim to the shores of North Korea, in fact, sailed to the other side. Now, they also admit that it does go on down to Australia. But if you notice, though, on April 14th, it was reported the U.S. aircraft here went to the DPRK at a distance of an airstrike, uh, within airstrike distance there. So they do claim that it did get within airstriking distance, but yet not it did not stay there as it seems that President Trump implied that they were deployed there and that they were there waiting for his approval of whether or not a war would actually be carried out. And of course the Chinese and Russians, they did decide to intercept these, uh, these aircraft carrier group uh, just to see what was going to go on. That was brought out on many different news sources, but the nationalcentennial.com is the one we're sharing with you here about that information. But again, as I say though, you cannot help but wonder 
what's really going on. And of course, we have bipartisan report here. Just in, President Trump did not authorize the use of mother of all bombs. I actually brought that up because myself, I was watching live the very, uh, where everybody got this information from. I was watching the live uh, broadcast from uh, the Washington's uh, own YouTube channel. Um, and uh, the, that's the uh, White House's uh, press release YouTube channel where they, they broadcast this of the I-85 bridge collapse and the first responders where the president was honoring them at the White House. I happened to catch that live. At the end of the broadcast, before they were able to edit it out, one journalist asked the question to the president of the United States whether or not he actually authorized that Moab bomb, as the, the acronym or the nickname has been given, the mother of all bombs, the largest just shy of a nuclear force blast that was dropped in Afghanistan. He skirted the question, and I caught it immediately as well. Why is he not answering, yes, I authorized it, but he begins to talk about having a great military, and yes, I've authorized my military to take care of things. Great bunch of guys running this thing. It's th things like this nature. And that's when I begin to realize, well, wow, you know, I mean, we've heard so much about a shadow government, but this is really obvious here that there is a shadow government when the president uh, he says, yes, we all know about that. Well, sure, we all know about it, but the question was, did you authorize this? You're the commander-in-chief. And again, I don't look down on President Trump because of this. I'm just trying to show you that we may end up in a war with North Korea and Syria, not because President Donald Trump has authorized anything. You know, the thing is, is when the shadow government is trying to communicate what they want done, he's supposed to be the spokesman just to get the information out to the rest of the world that he's doing it, to make it look like he's the guy that actually did it, such as the missile strikes that were, or the missile, uh, 59 Tomahawk cruise missiles that were struck there in Syria recently with President Xi at his hand there. All this was done as a show of force and also to give a message to President Xi. Look what we're capable of doing. And of course, he never, President Xi never had the opportunity to consult his own military personnel as to what was going on. So that was very interesting how that worked out. But again, they had the connection, the shadow government, the military industrial complex was working with the president to make sure that he looked like he was a leader of strong force and resolve in what was being done. But then the slip ups come because of North Korea and because of Afghanistan and they weren't in sync with one another. And so therefore it's becoming more and more obvious that no, the president doesn't run everything. Now we can take a look at this website here, conscious, uh, ConsciousLifeNews.com. They've given us a whole list of presidents, former presidents, and other well-known officials there that have spoke about these type things, such as Theodore Roosevelt, behind the uh, ostensible government sits enthroned an invisible government owing no allegiance and acknowledging no responsibility to the people. To destroy this invisible government, to be foul, notice what he, call, what he calls it, the unholy alliance between corrupt business and corrupt politics is the first task of the statesmanship of the day. Theodore Roosevelt, former president, 26th president of the United States, made that statement. Unholy alliance? Tell me that the Vatican is not written all over his own statement. Also, Woodrow Wilson, the 28th president, said, A great industrial nation is controlled by its systems of credit. Our system of credit is privately concentrated. The growth of the nation, therefore, and all our activities are in the hands of a few men. We have come to, to be one of, uh, of the worst ruled, one of the most completely controlled and dominated governments in civilized world. No longer a government by free opinion, no longer a government by conviction and the vote of the majority, but a government by the opinion and the duress of small groups of dominated men. You don't think that we're being controlled? I mean, it, it, and the list goes on, friends. Uh, so when... Uh, when Bill Clinton makes this comment, so, uh, alleged comment to uh, uh, none other than Sarah McClinton, McClin uh, gosh, I forget her last name, uh, but anyway, the reporter there is obvious that that is true. John F. Uh, uh, Highland states the real menace of the Republic is the invisible government, which, like a giant octopus, sprawls its slimy legs all over our cities, states, and nation. The little, um, uh, the little. Uh, Pardon me there, Some, something's just trying to pop up on me there. I'm trying to keep this going for you here. The, uh, the little uh, uh, 
Cordier of a power international bankers virtually run the United States government for their own selfish, pur selfish purposes. They practically control both parties and control the majority of the newspapers and magazines in this country. That was the New York mayor, John F. Hyland, uh, stated this. New York Times, March 26 of 1922. Uh, Edward Hayes. Propaganda, 1928, he wrote, he is the father of the uh, public relations, the consciousness, intelligence, and manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses as an important element in the democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. I mean, where does it end, friends? Where does it end? Let's go all the way, let's move forward to Franklin D. Roosevelt, all the way to 1945, right? FDR, the truth of the matter is, as you and I know, that a financial element in the large centers has owned the government ever since the days of Andrew Jackson. All right, uh, William Jenner, uh, uh, who, is the, uh, who is a former senator. Today, the path of total dictatorship in the U.S. can be laid by strictly legal means. We have a well-organized political action group in this country determined to destroy our Constitution and establish a one-party state. It operates secretly, silently, contentiously to transform our government. The ruthless power-seeking elite is a disease of our century. All right? Uh, and, and like I said, it just doesn't stop. Edgar Hoover uh, of Elks Magazine, the American mind simply has not come to the realization of the evil which has been introduced to our, uh, into our midst. It rejects even the assumption that human creatures could espouse a philosophy in which must ultimately destroy all that is good and decent. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower, we must guard against the acquisition of the unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. That's why I mentioned the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties and dem democratic processes. We should take nothing for granted. Um, as he goes on. And of course, JFK, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically uh, opposed to secret societies. A secret oath and the secret proceedings, our way of life is under attack. Those who make themselves our enemy are advancing around the globe. No war ever posed a greater threat to our society. If you are awaiting and finding of a clear and a present danger, then I can only say that the danger has been uh, more clear and its present has never been more imminent, for we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily to convert means of expanding its sphere uh, of influence on infiltration in, instead of invasion and subversion, instead of elections and intimidation, instead of free choice on guerrillas by night, instead of armies by day. It is a system which uh, the conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, uh, intelligence, and economic, scientific, and political operations. Okay, and its preparations are concealed, not published, it mis its mistakes are buried, not headlined, its dis dissenters are silenced, not praised. All right. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. JFK, 35th President of the United States, made that statement there. Um, uh, another one here I think that's important to bring out as well, and this was Daniel K. Uh, in uh, Inouye, I can't pronounce his name, U.S. Senator of Hawaii, there exists a shadowy government with its own Air Force, its own Navy, its own fundraising me uh, mechanism, and the ability to pure, uh, pursue its own ideas of national interest, free from all checks and balances, and free from the law itself. That's just to name a few. I'll have the link below for you so you can see this for yourself. So anyway, so what happened, though, over with North Korea? It wasn't that President Donald Trump was afraid. I believe he'd take on North Korea with no questions asked. But again, it's the shadow government running everything. And all we're seeing with President Donald Trump is he's trying to deal with the situation, but he knows his hands are tied. Now, as I shared with you the other day, Putin moves his own military forces to the North Korean border. So what 
<laughs> you know, he moves his forces down there. The Chinese move their forces down there as well. They've got it all over the place. The Chinese especially has a massive buildup on the border of North Korea, Russia, and, and the Chinese, a after President Xi gets away from President Donald Trump and he gets back home, first thing he does, he calls President Putin and he says, I need your help with North Korea. So they have an intel ships follow the USS Carl Vincent, and then what do they do there? The Chinese already move 150,000 soldiers plus a medical unit. Now they're building hospitals there on the border. All right, I can share it. Let me show you that information. Let me just, let me take it over here to my good friend on Already Happened here, just so you can see. He's been sh sharing some of this. Check out his website, alreadyhappened.com. Um, but he's actually showing some of the latest things going on. Of course, this was the Chinese uh, military, one of the private videos that got uploaded to YouTube. The S-300 systems and everything headed to the border of North Korea, China majorly preparing over there. Uh, but they're also, um, what the Chinese were doing as well was they were, here it is right here, right here in Dandong, they are actually setting up uh, hospitals. They've not stopped. They know that the U.S. and military industrial complex is going to strike a war there. They're just getting ready to deal with China and Russia at the same time because they know it's coming. Another private video loaded up in China there showing what? This is the medic units going in. Not the military, I mean, it's military medic units and everything, but not to mention all the other stuff. But he also loaded something too that I thought was very interesting that I, I wanted to share with you as well because it's a danger that we face on a daily basis as well as investigative journalists. And he was quoting here from uh, Snowden and what he said, investigative journalists considered more dangerous than hackers one step below the terrorist. We have a serious job, friends, very serious. And it's one that we don't take lightly because we feel it important to get the message out to you guys. And by the way, this news article here, I just want to share it with the Conservative Daily Post. They're saying here, and they are right, Dmitry uh, Kislyov, uh, we know him, we've seen him on uh, TV many times, Russian television, state television. It's not, well, it's not state television, but, you know, it's funded a lot by the state, no doubt. Um, has actually made many provocative statements, including that, that uh, they consider Donald Trump more dangerous than Kim Jong-un. Believe me, Russia also knows that uh, it's not President Trump that's running, it's the deep state that's running this military issue going on. And, uh, and we never know who's the big players involved in this. You could might be somebody like Rex Tillerson, who's the Secretary of State, this part of this. I don't know, and I'm not here to blame this man either. I don't know, because uh, I don't know who these deep state government officials are that are running this, that want this war because it helps the economic powerhouse that they're trying to help create. Uh, but we are trying to bring as much stuff to light, hopefully, that it might help avert a war. Another article that just came out in the Russian language, RIA.RU, why the West analyzes the options of war with Russia. They are majorly bent on analyzing the possible ability for NATO to overcome and annihilate Russia in any type of given war. That's what the article goes in here about. It also talks about, as I shared with you the other day, the F-35 fighter jets that are, that are moved there on the uh, on the coast there with Russia. It's a major problem that, that's going on. And uh, the U.S. is getting ready for war, not just with North Korea, but with Russia and even with China. As we stated the other day, J Daniel chapter 11, verse 44, speaks about, um, well, let's just let's pull it up real quick. Let's throw it in here with the rest of these. I think we, we need to, we got to look at it one more time, friends, because it is important. It's very serious. And it is obvious that Daniel 11.44 is the next part to be concluded. I showed you how verse 39 was the, uh, um, this was the alliance between Rome and Great Britain. It's what got World War I started. Uh, but then they also, they worked on putting together that huge alliance. As the one former president says, an unholy alliance. Rome's hand is in every bit of this, friends. Erdogan, by the way, Erdogan is nothing but a puppet in this entire game. They're using Erdogan as a caliphate to take the heat off the Pope of Rome or whoever the Pope is intending on putting before the world that uh, this is the Antichrist. Uh, I cannot help but think that they're taking someone, um, it, hey, maybe sitting right there, not the White House itself, but it has some, could have something to do with Kushner as well. All right, so don't, don't think for a minute that couldn't be a possibility. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall affrighten him. Actually, that word there is pain.
panic. See, and he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. And I know some people think that that's crazy. They think that the king of the north is Russia. Totally wrong. You, you cannot help but look at the prophecy of Daniel chapter 11 from verse 39 on down. Did you see Russia go through the Middle East and wipe out everything? Did you see Russia go topple Egypt? Did you see Russia go topple Libya? Did you see Russia do all of this? No, it's the United States with NATO. It's not the, and it's not President Trump, and it's not President Obama or President uh, Clinton. As much as we'd like to think, okay, Obama did this. Yeah, he's the fall guy. He is the fall guy. I agree with that. Now, I ain't saying that Obama was a great president, by no means. But the point is, he's the fall guy. But it's that industrial military complex and those bankers that are running that, uh, the, the shadow government, they're the ones that say, take this nation out, take that nation out. This one's going to fall, that one's going to fall. Remember General Wesley Clark when he made that statement? What does he say, General Wesley Clark? Uh, the other general that's, that he's quoting, he says, well, I don't know. If we got a great military, every problem's got to look like a nail. And where are the hammer? This is crazy. But anyway, this causes him to panic. 